everyone, with the Origins reveal of the new Glen 9x4 configuration, I decided to see if it was possible to launch a moon mission with three launches of this variant of the rocket, considering that it has the capability of getting 70 tons to lower orbit and potentially 20 tons or more to the moon. When you think about it, three launches and 20 tons to the moon means 60 tons to the moon which is pretty good, that's more than Saturn V was capable of, it was capable of 45 tons to the moon, possibly 48, but then again, the combined mass of the Orion spacecraft, which we have to get the astronauts back, as well as the lander, which is presumably in this case going to be the Blue Moon Mark II, would be closer to 90 tons, uh, maybe 85 to 90 tons. So then it's too much, right? Well, it depends on exactly how we work with it. Uh, after all, the capability is if the second stage is actually transferring that payload to the moon. We're not going to have the second stage transferring the payload to the moon. Also, the 70 tons to lower orbit is only if the second stage is pushed to be the stage that actually makes orbit. If we don't use it to make orbit, we can get more than 70 tons to lower Earth orbit, in fact. And so we are going to do those things. What we have here first is the lunar transfer stage for the lander. Now, I was informed during the stream where I did all this that actually the Blue Moon tanks can't actually be launched with the propellant. So in real life, they're they're lighter than they need to be in order to be launched with the propellant, which sucks. Uh, they're only meant to carry the propellant in space or on the moon. So that's a bit of a problem. They can't go through all the G-forces of launch with the propellant. They have to be refueled basically with an upper stage. So here we're launching the lander and it has the same problem. On the other hand, I set the mass of the tanks for my version of the Blue Moon Mark II based on what they ought to be in order to bear these forces. So the real ones are probably lighter, and the ones I have are based on like the procedural tanks and stuff like that, and are actually heavier in all likelihood than what they have for the Blue Moon. So I'm hoping for that. However, that aside, this whole free launch business is very tight, and I was trying this out because I had no idea whether or not the Delta Vs would work out. Uh, part of the problem is, of course, Orion's service module, where we are using the intended service module for Orion, not my preferred Hydrolox arrangement. Uh, so that's very limiting because it can't get to a low lunar orbit, and we are going to have to deal with that. So we're going to be staging in a high lunar orbit in order to ensure that Orion can deal with it. Here we are completing orbit with some despair, and we could pro if only the Blue Moon Mark II was capable of carrying more fuel in it, that would be great in this case, because we will be needing it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, we could have done with a little bit more of a Blue Moon Mark II. You can see it's about 60 tons in orbit, but the launcher can carry 70 tons, right? So I would have preferred if it was a 70 ton lander. Of course, then there's the problem where it can't actually carry that fuel in there. But setting that aside, if the launcher could carry 70 tons, let's make the tanks heavier and make it a 70 ton lander, is what I'm saying. Anyway, here is the transfer stage, and I put four BE-7 engines instead of the usual three, just because I'm impatient. They can use three if they want to. Uh, and we are docking the transfer stage with the lander. You can tell the transfer stage is the transfer stage because in place of the cabin, crew cabin, it's got an extra tank. So that gives us more fuel like that. And let's it do the transfer. Actually, it ended up with only 2,970 meters per second here, not the full 3,070 or so that we needed. And because of the really long burn time, 
we are going to have to do this burn in two bits and it's not as efficient so it actually is going to take more than 3070. Uh, but anyway, the point is that we wasted some along the way and that's going to have an effect too. You know, rendezvous itself takes some of the Delta V out. Alright, so that's that exhausted. And we separate the stage off. And the lander is free to continue the transfer to the moon. And it took an extra 270 odd meters per second. And because of our inclination, I decided to go for an off plane transfer. So. Uh, I just went like that. That wouldn't be necessary. It's a little bit extra, but it's not horrible, actually. It's not throwing our Delta V off by that much. So, a little correction here, and then we are headed to the moon. So, with the two launches that we've done, we basically had 55 tons transferred to the moon, or an average of 27, uh, yeah, 27.5 tons per launch. So that's an improvement, but that's because we partially used the transfer stage to finish its own orbit. Okay, and then the lander here is capturing. It's only a light capture and we're going into a polar orbit as annoying as that is, but I was trying to do something similar to a near rectilinear halo orbit. And Presumably, any real mission would probably have this dock to Gateway first. But there we are. That's my simulated near rectilinear halo orbit with the periapsis near the South Pole. Okay, with that, we get to launch Orion over there. And in this case, Orion has a little transfer stage, a hydrolox transfer stage, on top of the second stage, so there's a third stage that will transfer Orion over. But I would prefer to just replace the service module on Orion with the Blue Moon Mark II, basically. Orion plus the Blue Moon Mark II would be close to the capacity of the rocket. I'll let the viewers decide whether they want to see a version like that based on the results from this try. Okay. Oh, and by the way, for each of these launches, we are reserving the fuel in the first stage for the landing on the drone ship. So, standard amount of fuel that I've tested before for a drone ship landing, and all the launches have that reserved. So. One thing we could do to improve our situation is to actually just use up the rocket and not retrieve it, but that would be a shame. But we do have some Delta V available there if we want to continue with the 3 launch version. I don't know how heavy exactly Blue Moon would, the Blue Moon Mark II would have to be in order to actually hold the fuel during launch, but I'd like that version personally. <laughs> I like that version because we will we have, we have to do extra launches in order to make it work out. I'll just pretend I've got that version. And if somebody would like me, they'd like to tell me exactly how heavy that version needs to be, I'll just set it to that. It's worthwhile to me because I don't have time to do launches all day long. So anyway, we've got this here. This is uh, basically Blue Moon Mark II's tanks plus a thrust plate for the four B7s. And they are doing our transfer. And they certainly have enough. They'll be spare on this launch. We could have made this all bigger probably. I still do the burn in two bits, so we do half the burn first and then the other half of the burn afterwards because of the long burn time. So that's that. It's still Sobel's uh, Orion. I'm so used to putting that together. I need to get into the flow of using the Artemis Construction Kit 1. Number wise, it's the same. Okay. So we have our transfer to the moon, 
And in this case, it's again about 27 tons that we're sending over. So if we do use a third stage like that, that's what you end up with. Orion here does an extra correction burn to ensure a rendezvous with the target, which is in a polar orbit and a very elliptical orbit, which causes all sorts of problems. And really, there's only one time to launch per month to rendezvous with a target like this around the moon. And the first two times I tried to launch Orion, I missed. I got the wrong timing. So, and, you know, the window could be maybe three days long, four days long, but it's basically like three, four days available per month that you could send Orion over and still have it rendezvous with the target without using too much fuel. And that would be true of Gateway as well. So here we are approaching the target and leaving from this elliptical orbit would basically be the same way as far as I can tell. I'm sure NASA can do some fancy business, but you know, you can't do all of the fancy in-body physics with a crewed vehicle because a lot of that normally requires you to be able to take a long time to transfer. So I don't know how much fancy business they could do. But anyway, I transferred the three crew into the lander. There's one crew left in Orion that happened to be Jeb in this case. I checked our supplies and then plotted the trip back home. Again, we have to wait in order to go back home. Otherwise, it'll take too much Delta V. And it ends up taking basically what we've got. It takes about 700 and the arrival time would be in 15 days, it says. Now, we have enough, assuming that we're going to transfer some supplies from the lander back over to Ryan or have them hang out in the lander for an extended period of time either way. And so I went with it and I made sure that we had a good place to land at the South Pole. And this is the burn to bring us into a low orbit. So note that it's a horrible 640 meters per second. And I swear we've lost some Delta V. I thought we had more than 5,000, but uh, the Delta V situation is getting a little bit iffy. And I knew already at this point that the Delta V situation was a little bit iffy. So, but here we go. It's not a very optimal descent, but actually, uh, on balance, it didn't take that much. We've got an orbital velocity of 1,600 no matter what. We have to kill that off. So we're not expecting to land with too much more than, like, say, 2,300. I'm trying to aim for that crater I've marked. And we've got a pretty good view of it, given our high approach. But this isn't an efficient approach, normally speaking, because you don't want to be fighting against gravity for this long. So the normal approaches are to hug close to the surface and sort of manage it and not fight directly against gravity for too much of the descent. And sort of as expected, we're going to land with a little bit more than 2,000, but with all this fighting against gravity, we lose more than I would have liked. So, touchdown, we'll have less than 2,200 here. So, here we come in. Extended view of the landing process. This is a nice crater overall, though. At least this bit is flat. This is all done during live streams, which is why the music is cut the way it is and has the credit at the top. That's always a good sign that I did this stuff during live stream. So there we go. We are, oop, it rocked a little bit. We are down. And it turns out that the Kerbals exit this. This is the Issa Quest Blue Moon Mark II. Exit upside down. Maybe Issa Quest has fixed it. This is an old version potentially. I haven't updated it. So I decide not to have any flag planting ceremony and instead 
just continue. Uh, now we have about 2,100 and it normally takes about 1,800 minimum to get to orbit. So we're expecting a little bit less than 300 meters per second by the end. And in this case there's no added inefficiency about it. We're hugging the surface, not fighting against gravity too much. And we're lining up reasonably properly with our target. And we end up with 264 meters per second left. Well, we sort of know from the amount that we spent coming down to low orbit that we needed 640 meters per second to get back up. And we don't have that. So it looks like we're at best 400 meters per second short. So yeah, the three launch version didn't work out at least on this try, and I'll have to find some way of getting 400 meters per second extra. We could expend the boosters, we could do some other shenanigans, I don't know. But the main thing is if I could just have a Hydrolock service module on Orion, that would be great. <laughs> so that that is my favorite option, but you know, that's not a option for the near term. It's not like in the next few years, anybody is going to be willing to use a Hydrolox service module on Orion, even though I think for the long term, that would be great. Anyway, with that, that was my attempt at the three launch New Glenn 9x4 moon mission. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.